of the pool immediately. <laughs> and here I am. It's just me. Of course, but you'll get that well, later. Excuse me, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had a sleep. That's great. Have you had the tooth fixed yet? No, I got COVID like uh, the night before I was supposed to go get it fixed, so I had to cancel. It's a good look. Sign, yeah, a sign that I need to keep it. So, yeah. When, how did you do it? Uh, well, originally I got hit by a snow plow and my face hit the concrete, but uh, then I popped it out actually in Montrembon 70.3, opening okay. a bottle the wrong way. Yeah, we see, you gotta get, you know? Got to get lessons on that. You know, yeah, follow up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You forget what side. Uh, yeah. Um, in the moment. I don't know if you had a look, but the. I knew about the swim, supposedly. They moved it into. Yeah, so it's, the, uh, it's not in the river, it's in yeah. the canal. Is that so good or bad? Mate, for you, I think it's good. How many loops is it? Just one, so you go oh, up wow. 650, back 650, down 350, back 350, and out. Same transition as last year. The bike, they said this first bit's the same, but then you don't go out on the highway, you're just going down. So it's 40 down, 40 back. Oh wow, just a straight out and back. Straight out and back. And no, is this all one road? I think it is, yeah. Wow. But it's not a highway. This is your old, Crazy old course. Yeah. That, one, that was a bit, there was a bit of technicality to that one, that technicality, but you know what I mean? Like, well, you, you go through actually, towns, I No, see. yeah. You go through a couple of towns, so you might be worth driving yeah. a bit of it. Mm -hmm. right. And then you get in and run is, made its out for 9k and back. Oh wow, they changed the whole thing. Eh? So yeah, so you all come right. out, um, so you come out here and you get onto the canal. Where you, where you swam last year, you yeah. just run down that way on that path. Just straight down and I think turn so. around and come yeah, back. Wow, pretty this cool. is a horribly boring course. Eh? Yeah. Well, this is actually better for me because I can make up some time here without any knowledge. Hmm. Well, the only t place to time you'll see people yeah. is here. Uh -huh. <laughs> no one will know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. All right. Stealth mission. And then, yeah, the run. So. Who, who, who am I racing? Do you know? I do know, but I can't disclose. Two two Ks, two one K. But if you do race pace, this is faster than race pace. I hate to say he won his death then. Eighty one, eighty two. Yeah, so now we are here watching the potential competitors. Like I don't know who I'm racing uh, on Saturday before six o'clock today. So I'm now trying to get like an understanding of who is in shape, who is not. Uh, Hayden is looking sharp when I saw him at lunch today. I tried to get like an understanding of Lionel, if he's running fast. Apparently he's 24 hours late for a track session. We were here yesterday, put in 12K. He's now only having 6K. So I didn't know that you could do that. Can't turn in one day late and half the session, but it will probably be faster than I guess than what we did yesterday. He will probably be running under three minute pace. He's not even hot. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really it's not. The travel this, would you, would you, this temp in Tucson is like probably feels 10 degrees hotter, undoubtedly. Who do you reckon you will get sun. on Saturday? Um, like in the race? Yeah. Uh, I think I've, I think I already know I'm getting laid low and uh, long for the most part. Let's see what we got here. We don't know anything for sure. 3300. How do you know you're getting them? Because they're asking me questions. They keep everyone keeps asking me questions about it. So <laughs> just the rumors. Here, will you, you, you hang on that for a minute and just let it stabilize for a minute? Have you ever had an audience this big for a track workout? No, I, you didn't bring your running shoes. What's the deal? <laughs> I have running shoes. Okay. Yeah, his crosser is sport. I can keep up. <laughs> go ahead, let's go, go, go past them. Because I'm being flexed on right now. Oh. 52, 53. <laughs> this is actually really good. Huh? So, he's doing 2K now on the track. Mikal said race pace. And a race pace for an uh, like 100k distance, that's less than threshold. And threshold for him is like 3.0 in lactate or below. And uh, now he's coming in here. It should be below 
2.2 to be real race pace. But I have zero belief it's going to be that. So we'll see. It's, it's going to be exciting. It's not below the threshold. It's race pace. So we have to target the race pace. Yeah. What do you think? What number? Now he's slowing down. He did 115.2. 115.9 and 117.2 so he's slowing, so he's down, slowing down yeah not just a bit significantly no. so um, it's good to kind of understand how he paces but now we actually went down again 115.8 i didn't get the, i didn't get the first 400 i'm guessing uh, 3.2 3.3 or 3.2 yeah lionel well, what do you think it'll be 2.5? Gustav thinks you're 4.5. 4.1. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. <laughs> Aaron should also guess. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, 2.8. Oh. Oh. oh! What was it? 3.9, and I'm the closest one. I know his body. I've seen that body before. Another 2K. Coach, 2x1K or another 2K? I could train in this. I can't train in Tucson. It's too hot. I have yeah. to do my sessions indoors. Yeah. Unless I did a session that was about this temp, but I started about 7.30 a.m. Okay. That's about the best you can do. It's not the temp so much, though it does get hot. It's the sun. The sun exposure. It's like insane, actually, the difference between when the sun is out, and unfortunately the sun is out like 12 hours a day versus even when it's overcast. I was like, I'm slowing it down. You do what you want. Yeah. Because I could tell I was, he was poor. Because well, he not, told it's me, not good numbers, but he's like 61 he kilos. He told me he pushed 290 in Edmonton. Yeah. I pushed 322 and I outbiked oh, yeah. him by about four minutes. Yeah. But he, yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you around. Yes. Cheers. A little bit of re redemption with this pick. Uh, one of the most vocal athletes and phenomenal athletes from Boulder, Colorado, Sam Long. <laughs> Go on, Sam. Take a place at the front of the stage, if you would, please. International to you for the next pick, please. Well, there's no easy matchups, is this? So, for match number eight, the toughest man in triathlon with the best smile, the lion, the lion himself, Lionel Sanders. So this is really a young guy, I, I had no idea who he was before. Uh, he can swim, bike, run and sing and rap. So uh, he's our world number 10, Sam Lato. Sam, initial thoughts. I gotta decide if I'm gonna say my initial thoughts. <laughs> or if I just save it for race day. Oh, Sam, I see how pissed you are out there, buddy. Yeah. The fire's burning. Like the fire's it. burning. Me and Lionel have never been teammates to this degree. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But it's a good matchup. I mean, we all would have preferred Magnus. Magnus would have been the preferred matchup, but you get what yeah. you get. Oh, what room are we in? Right here. Right here. Right here. Me. Come here. Hello. There we are. That's important. Where do you want to be in relation to the other two at the various points, checkpoints, etc.? Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lonely effort for me. Um, to be honest, I think we could uh, 
I think we could skip the swim and I'd still give them a run for their money. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident about that if you look at the times from previous races, um, like in Edmonton, for instance. I mean, yeah, I think uh, I'm also very used to individual time trials, but uh, what this guy just said that he could beat us if there wasn't a swim is uh, absolutely the farthest thing from the truth. I think okay, Lionel... Skip, skip the thing about St. George. <laughs> skip the thing about St. George. Yeah. No, yeah, skip I, the thing about St. George. That's the only time we race. Yeah, I was hit by a car nine days before. Okay, sorry. But yeah, maybe you'll make fun of me for getting hit by a car too. That would be very much in your character. But you neglected the fact that Lionel has won, what, 30 70.3s? Is that right? Oh, I've, I've won nothing compared to you yeah, two guys. Yeah, you have won zero be, 70.3s. And I'm still going to be you. I've won nothing. I've won a zero 70, no 70.3s, no Ironmans. Yeah. And, I'm, and nobody's going to beat you. So that's and what's difficult. There's a degree of respect that should come in this sport. <laughs> I think you take it serious, too seriously. Too seriously? Yeah, I have a, I have a lot of respect for athletes. Um, and I just think you take the sport a bit too seriously. Yeah. Perhaps you should show that respect to other athletes. Okay, okay so. And most people say, actually, that I'm a lot of fun. And I got to okay. know most people. So... I've actually, you're okay. the first person who's ever said that to me. I'm glad you said that. All right, here we yeah. go. Here we go. We'll settle it on the race. We got we'll some beef. It on the race we got course. beef up in here. Yeah. Woo! And I'll get to be right in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to say? Sorry, Sam, it, it definitely wasn't an intention like that, but appreciate your work. I'll see you guys later. All right. I know Sam. I love Sam. He's like me, he wears his heart on his sleeve. You can't, I mean, everyone's different. You know what I mean? You can't poke at people like that, I think. When it's, when it's real. Yeah. 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 That's all, man. Right? The, the attitude, man, you don't want to poke, like, it's getting personal. Man. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I keep. It's yeah. just, uh, and it's been personal the whole time. Yeah, yeah. there's a personal thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, like, yeah. I hear it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, it's I just don't yeah. want to be on camera with it. Yeah, I hear you. I know. I think hold this in there. Are your guys' are not ever like. No, it's never. No, I don't know. I don't, well, I don't we love to compete and we love to yeah. be aggressive and compete. Yeah, it's way different. We just settle it out on the course and, that's what I mean, and then we shake hands at the end and it's all good. Yeah, you settle exactly. it on the course. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'll see you guys. Bye. Yeah, see you, bro. Can you let me in? All right, we're 24 hours out. You got your matchup, and there's lots of drama in it. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm still adapting. I probably won't be adapted fully before the race, but I mean, I knew what I was getting myself into. It's pretty tough with the nine hour time change. So um, I definitely feel I could use a couple more days, but uh, I mean, that's part of racing internationally. So you have to rise to the occasion and uh, get the job done. And so I intend to do that. It's a tough race, a tough matchup. Sam Laidlow obviously is gonna be, you know, I'd say at best if we're under three minute deficit, I'd say we're doing pretty good. And so that's a lot of time to make up on a solid all around athlete. And so uh, Sam and I are going to have to both be on point. And that's a good test. I think it's a good test. For, for both of us actually to go up against a very strong swimmer and who also is good on the bike and the run too, no no clear weakness and see if we can contend. And if we can't, then, you know, it'll be motivating. We'll be able to go back and, and uh, continue to hone where we need to in order to be competitive. So yeah, it'll be, it'll be an interesting race undoubtedly. Aid station, it will be uh, ready for you uh, and please uh, make sure to wrong direction. Don't forget that there is a rule that if you come back to the point where you missed the course and you will continue on the right. And then two down. I think it's double, double the distance up and one down. Five point. Where is the stratus here that they need to put, get their special needs? The rooms, the very Lounge. nice rooms on the top of the building. Gustav Wolves wonder where the first runner, here. last biker. It's now a race happening. Sam. Sorry? It's it, all done. It, that, those fucking phones are so fucking stupid. One of the worst mm -hmm. things that society ever created. One day we will look back and be like, all the stuff that came, don't, don't get me wrong, it's great to talk to people. Very important. But social media and all these other fucking stupid things are truly, I would say, 
more negative than positive mm -hmm. in society. Mm -hmm. Create more negativity and bring people down than bring people up. Um, Mass connections, great, you know, such that you can organize yourselves and all those sorts of things. But this stuff we're dealing with now, absolute stupidity. What is this? It's a mustache. That's what they call it. These are gummy bears. But <clears throat> a couple of guys I saw out there all shaved into a mustache. Told them I'd join them. Here I am. Look at that. What do you got to go do now? I'm gonna go eat. I don't know what, but uh, maybe pasta, maybe rice. And then uh, begin the process of trying to fall asleep. Very difficult. Still need probably five days to get on this time, but oh well, at least it's a 2.30 start for me-ish. You feeling nervous before the gun or are you just ready to go right now? Mm, no, I'm not. I'm not nervous. Um, I'm, I'm excited. Laid low is a class A swimmer, and so it'll be nice to see if, you know, in, in the three weeks between the races, and I did a, quite a bit of quality with more oxygen, if I can get closer to him. And then uh, he's also a class biker, and he's a pretty good runner off of it too. So, and then of course uh, Long, I've had lots of great battles with Long. So, it's a fun one. It's a, it's a good matchup. It ain't an easy matchup. I'm gonna have to do uh, a very good performance in order to to win. But I think I can. I think I have it in me. But I'm excited to find out if that's true. Uh, there's lots of beef going on between Sam and Sam. What are your thoughts on it? Um, being completely honest, <clears throat> I just don't... I, I'm all for... I mean, I feel like you and I have done a good job. We've done our part to try and grow the sport of triathlon and make it fun and entertaining and accessible. I don't think... I think we should emulate UFC and, you know, other sports in some regards. And in other regards, we should not. And so I ain't hating on nobody. All I'm saying is <clears throat> triathlon is an inclusive sport and it's not, it's not an aggressive sport. And so, you know, it's cool to have little banter and stuff. But uh, I don't think we need to go down the pathway of emulating, you know, um, being aggressive and stuff to each other. And uh, I think if someone's down, it doesn't matter if you don't like them or something, you still should pick them up, you know? And so I think I think we should respect each other and care for each other and whatever. That might sound corny or something, but I believe that is what's the beauty of triathlon is that we can go out there and, and have real good fierce battles out on the course and then we can all hang out with each other afterwards and be kind people and grow and learn from each other and so uh, that's all i'll say on of course there's beef amongst people all the time right i have beef with people too but i also try and forgive people and you know grow and get over the beef because i believe uh it is the buddha who said something like uh anger is like a hot coal uh possessing a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone you are the one who gets burned and I think that is, uh, you know, with this kind of beef and stuff, just squash the beef and let it go, you know? Is that all on the race course? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just piddly little stuff, you know? Just, just let it go and let's, let's all be friends. Do you have any other questions before yes. I go into the race? Before you go into the race, uh, obviously, probably the highlight of the week <laughs> was the drama between uh, Sam Long and Sam Laidlow. Was that all fake and staged? I don't know what was going on between those guys before we got here. I'm assuming there was some stuff going on between them before. I know they had this little rap thing that Sam Laidlow did, and he mentioned both of us in it. I had no idea what he was even saying, if I'm being honest with you. I couldn't understand what he was saying in the rap. Uh, but uh, we were both mentioned in that, so I already was kind of coming in with a bit of a chip on my shoulder, because I'm sure when you get mentioned in a in a rap tape, it's probably not in a positive light. 
Uh, and so, so yeah, so I was already, you know, kind of seeing the beef between these two guys brewing and it did brew and it was not fabricated in any way and it brewed and overboiled. And I would say, I don't want to speak for the guys, but I would say, uh, in that little thing that the PTO did and posted when we had the three person interview, I would say we weren't too far from the insecurity, uh, because there may have been some, some physical, uh, contact up up pretty close to uh next so so it was real and then on the start line you know uh it it became i think me and sam versus laid low just just as a byproduct of um you know a couple of remarks that were made and stuff and i don't have any skin in this game i didn't really care if i'm being honest with you but you know sam long is a friend of mine i've had a lot of battles with him and so I was happy to team up with him uh, against someone who he, you know, sort of felt was in the getting close to in the wrong. Um, there was kind of an incident uh, that happened bef before the race. Sam stormed out of the interview. Were what were your thoughts right after that? Were you ready just to uh, go to battle after that? What did, did you chat with Sam before the the two other guys got in there? We went straight from the press conference thing to there, and I got in there. I thought I was just doing my own interview, and then they had three chairs there, and I actually said to the interviewer, uh, "Like you guys might need to have security in here. Like I don't think they really. I think a lot of people thought that it was like." Um, you know, for the camera or whatever, but I mean, these two definitely were getting onto the uh, personal attacks of each other's side, and you know, all it takes is one type of personality who feels offended and you know throws first, and all of a sudden we got ourselves a physical altercation. And I don't think we were too too far away from that. So I think in the future, uh, as a feedback, if you have a couple of dudes who are. Uh, starting to go down that path. I don't know if you should sit them right next to each other. Yeah, it was good. I learned a valuable lesson from Gustav and Christian in Edmonton that I told you in that video, that those guys were amping themselves up, getting themselves in the zone. And I thought, you know what? It's funny, it was weird in the moment, but I was like, you know, that's kind of something I'm lacking right now in my, in my buildups to these races. I remember St. George Ironman just not being really... I don't know, it was just kind of blah, it wasn't really like, you know, amped and like ready to push myself to a new place. And so, you you know, if you want to have a big performance, then I think you kind of got to get your mind, you know, very far removed from your daily life and into a place that will allow you to push yourself to the absolute limit. It's just very far removed where you need to go in these, these place in these, these races in your mind and in your body, it's very far removed from daily life. And so you, you, I, you know, you got to get yourself there and do what it takes to get there. So I tried to really try to put myself somewhere, you know, my, my deep down inside myself. And that, that's where I was at. Um, and I was, did a pretty good job of it. And so, yeah, I was last one to call down the, the ramp and I knew it was going to be quick. And so I pretty much got down there, towed the line, Gun went, Sam and I, Sam Long and I probably should have discussed this a little better because we were both extremely similar swimmers. And I think we impeded each other a bit the first 100 or 200, which was dumb. We should have already had like, you know, no ego, who's the better takeout here and had guy fall in immediately because we probably could have taken the first 200 out a bit quicker. We had no shot. Uh, Laidlow is an amazing swimmer. And we had absolutely no shot to ever be in his draft. And he knew, you know, he definitely made sure of that. Uh, and then the swim itself, uh, I started to, I, I mean, I can't even tell if I was actually putting any time into Sam. I think, I, I think he just basically said, I'm not going to swim in, in your space. I'm just going to get on your feet if you're not going to give it up to me. So then I basically pulled uh, the swim and I was fine to do that. You know, in return, I would hope that Sam would pull the first basically 20k of the bike and that's what happened swim wise it was horrible like I like and I don't mean that 
in any way other than in internally. Like I can feel that my swimming is really poor right now. I'm just slipping through the water. I can feel that I am literally just pushing arms through water and going less than one meter forward every single stroke. And it's like, it's very bothersome knowing that you're doing it. And so I just need to go back and, you know, at least be conscious of that and, and improve it and fix it, you know, and I can, I've, I've had much better stroke in the past. So that was basically the theme of the entire swim was dang, this is, this is, you, you just got to go back and work. And so we did that. And then out onto the bike, we were side by side. I told Sam as we were running to the mount line, you take first pull. He did took first pull till the turnaround and I passed him. Uh, I don't, I think we made up, I was unable to get a gap, but I think we made up about a minute, maybe by the first turn. Like I, I took a split when I saw laid low and it was one minute till we got to the turnaround. So he we had to have been around uh, and we were about 313 down. So we had to have made up about a minute. Um, I didn't dare look at my power meter because I was pushing extremely hard and I just didn't want to know what it said. Sam had been in the same frame of mind, I believe, and he didn't even race with a power meter because basically it was just a race and I couldn't care less about what the power meter says. You do what it takes and it doesn't matter, no limits. And so then I took the, the um, actually I took the lead into the turnaround. So he pulled the first 20K, then I took the lead into the turnaround, then we did the turnaround and Sam came by um, put in a nice pull for another 20 K. Then I passed Sam. And then, um, now I didn't know the gap, but I started to see the helicopter up ahead and I assumed it was laid low that it was at, and it was only maybe 200 meters ahead or so. Well, more than that, but maybe half a kilometer ahead, but <clears throat> I assumed that that was laid low and that was really motivating. And so then I just continued to push really, really hard then I could see him, and obviously when you can see him, then it's game over. And so then I uh, eventually caught laid low, passed them. I went by, you know, pretty good power just to see if we could create separation because we had pulled back quite a bit of time, and I assumed that we w had a chance at dropping him. Long immediately came by me and said, let's bury this guy. And uh, so he put in a really big dig, and I was amazed actually when we looked back and we hadn't dropped him. Uh, and, and he was still there. And so, you know, hats off to him for not giving up. And yeah, uh, long led in all the way into transition. I give up a little bit of space in the corners because I suck at cornering and continue to need to improve on that. But I also was not really looking to push anything just because I had crashed in this race last year and I didn't want to crash again. And out onto the wrong, onto the run, um, long had probably about a five second gap on me. Just I fiddled with one of my socks. It was a real goal of mine to not have poor transitions this time. I did transition quite poorly in Edmonton. And so it was a goal to not do that. I fumbled with one sock, which cost me the gap to long. It was all good though. Both these guys, Laidlow was still with us. Both these guys went out like crazy hard. Uh, I, I, you know, I've, do, I've done enough of these to know that it was not a pace that we were going to actually do the run at. So I was fine to let gaps open a little. Both of them were ahead of me. Uh, I got my GPS watch going finally. And then I had the thing. It said 310 Ks. And so I knew this is none of these guys are running 57 on this course. And so I just kind of hung out around 315, 320. And then Laylo came back. He tried to come with me. And then he dropped back. And then eventually I caught long. I'd say by about the one kilometer mark. And then the, the battle was on. Uh, Long and I still were on the same team at this point because we both had a bit of a chip on our shoulder. We got up onto the onto the dike and uh, we both basically decided that our best bet here is to share the lead. So we did one kilometer pulls. It was about 7K on there. We did one kilometer pulls into the wind. Long does make a very good uh, person to draft. I probably do not make as good of a person to draft, but... Anyhow, we both shared the workload. And then once we made the turnaround at the far side, uh, it was big tailwind, so we just ran side by side. <clears throat> we saw Laidlow was having a bad day, and you know, at that point, basically, the, the um, working together was over because it was irrelevant at that point. 
And so now the, the battle is on. And literally, I asked Long, how you feeling? He said, not too bad. Uh, and I didn't feel too bad at this point. But like one kilometer later, I felt horrible. And I, I di he didn't even surge really on me. I just started to fade. And so I let the gap open up. I'd say it got to about 50 meters. I took some carbs. Once I got on my own, I sort of was able to focus more on myself. And I realized that I was uh, breathing a lot more shallow than usual. And that's when I started, I think, to re-engage my diaphragm a bit and breathe, you know, deep into my lungs. And then I began to catch a second wind and I was able to get the speed back under 320Ks. And I saw actually at this time that the, the, the gap stopped opening and actually was coming back a little bit. And so then I realized long was probably fading a little bit now, which makes perfect sense as we probably have very similar systems and probably had consumed very similar quantities of carbs, etc. And had done basically the exact same race up until that point. So it would make sense that we would fade around similar points. And then I bridged a gap. Craig Alexander was yelling at me as I came by the little T to get, you know, back to the course. But there's another little out and back of about 2K. And he was yelling at me, you need to bridge the gap by the turnaround. And um, and so then that became my goal. I did. I bridged a gap literally right at the turnaround and uh, came up next to Long. And we basically decided that we're not going to draft or nothing anymore. We're both going to run side by side into the wind. It's all good. And we're going to settle this right here, right now. So when we got through one of the sections at the T where, where Craig was and where a bunch of people were, uh, I made the right turn and I basically, or just before I made the right turn because there's people around, I decided to use the momentum of the crowd and I put a surge in. But I knew that I was stupid because I knew how good of a downhill runner Long is. And of course, there's the downhill section back into the x bionic sphere there. And so the whole gap that I opened up at that point, Long was easily able to uh, bridge back down because he's a better downhill runner than I am. Now I knew that this is probably going to come down to the finish. Long put in a few surges, I'd say with about 1K to go, and I was able to cover them. I knew I probably uh, would have the advantage on the grass just because I grew up cross-country running. That's probably my most familiar of all athletic things is cross-country style running. And so then I was waiting, 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 waiting for him, just keeping an eye on him uh, to see if he was going to go first. And he didn't go first. And with 200 to go, I decided it's now or never. And so I went, I went full tilt and uh, the gap opened up, grabbed the international flag tried to soak in the crowd a tiny little bit and then uh you know screamed in uh I don't know carnal joy when I uh crossed the finish line uh you guys crossed the finish line and it looks like that it was more of a team effort I know you guys are really excited uh I heard a yo 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 and a no limits tell me about that little bit <laughs> Yeah, this one was a bit personal. I don't know really know why it was personal to me, but it was. Certainly it was personal to Long, and I was happy to team up with him and, you know, settle that beef out on the race course. And so, yeah, I mean, that, 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 it's all good. It's all good. It's just fun. It was just sports. I know Laidlow's intentions were always just to, you know drum up interest and to create, you know, fun rivalry. And that's cool. It's not a problem. You know, sometimes it's not received as you'd like and, and, you know, you got to kind of adjust. And so that's just a little lesson there. It's all good. It's all over. I think we're all good amongst each other. And it was a lot of fun. It certainly brought, I think the best out of, of Sam and I, and I'm excited for the next one. Um, Sam crossed the finish line, uh, laid low and, uh, you and Long both had words with him. Tell us about that. How Was that good? Yeah, I just said it's all good. Like, it's the beast done. It's over. Here we are. We're all good now. And we're going to uh, see each other many, many times over the next, I don't know, about well, those guys are a lot younger than I am. But for me, maybe the next five or six years and those two, the next decade. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And Laidlow has greatly motivated me. He's right. He's right. We are two athletes. When you are losing four minutes in the water 
you are a do athlete. You are a bike runner. And that's what we are. We're just so good at bike running that we can overcome the extremely poor swimming. I don't know if that's going to be possible for much longer. So four minute deficit, mm, probably not going to be possible. So you see it before you. Laidlow has given you the motivation. Fix it. You, you have to. It's do or die now. You must improve. You must bring it down. I don't care what the machine says. I don't care what anything says. I don't care how you do it. I don't care the stroke you use to do it, the stroke length, the stroke rate, the technique. I couldn't care less. Just fix it. Yeah, uh, we brought this up before the race, and it's a work in progress. I do believe Dylan McNeese, who's, who is kind of our pro athlete liaison, uh, I think he's doing a, a great job. I do think, you know, we are at least beginning the dialogues and beginning the ideas of forming a standardized procedure. Moto vehicles play a role in just about every race. They played a role in Edmonton. They played a role here. And they will continue to play roles in races, particularly because we are having an increase in media exposure, which is great. And we don't want to end that. But we need to have a standardized process with which no advantage is given to athletes, or at least the advantage is basically brought to, you know, nearly zero. And every now and then it happens by accident for a brief moment. And so in my mind, the most logical and easy thing to do in that regard with regards to motos is the shots are always from behind. If a shot is ever from the front, it must be taken from the left side of the yellow or the center line. Therefore, because for the athlete, it is a DQ to cross the center line. So if you crossed the center line to try and get a draft on a moto, that would be a DQ on the athlete. Therefore, the athlete won't do it. And therefore, except in you know, extreme circumstances where there may be a crazy crosswind coming from that front left side, you really shouldn't get an advantage uh, when the when the moto is over there. So I think that's pretty simple. I think that's about the best we're going to get for the most part. I think that's easy to explain to moto drivers as well as us as athletes can look when we're in the race and know that that's against the rules what's happening right there. And we can either take it up with the officials afterwards or even during. And I believe that is probably the best we're going to get. With regards to drafting, uh, which I don't think was a big problem in this race, I, not in my uh, one and I, not in any of the ones when I saw guys going by. But a lot of the athletes are still, you know, wondering how the heck do we even, in the, in the officials as well, are wondering how the heck do we even observe 20 meters. And, you know, I think Daytona and Miami, we had great uh, stuff going on in that we had um, on the road tape measured 20 meters and cones and i think we could do something like that particularly in a race like dallas we could at least have signs maybe four times each lap like two signs that say check your distance like challenge does that are measured 20 meters apart so that officials and athletes can see the distance of 20 meters uh you know four times per lap and I don't know how many laps there are. So, and then eventually we'll, we should have the race ranger technology, hopefully. But uh, that's still a little ways away. Um, all right. So I would like to thank everyone. We didn't have a race week series or anything this week. Uh, I just think that it's, you know, we kind of want to make the, the novelty or whatever of the race week series more interesting. You know, if we do it every single race, I just don't think it's, it's as interesting, so we're going to probably come back with something like that for, for Kona. Um, so sorry about that, but I appreciate you guys following along with all the PTO content. And so I'm assuming right now I am picking the winner of the, the goggles. Is that what I'm mm -hmm. doing? So I have been literally scrolling through all of these comments and stuff for the last however long I've been speaking. And our winner is... I can't look. Like scroll and pick one. Slow, slow. Flick it and then select just I did. I did. I just, I, this, right. it's where my thumb went. I truly didn't, I don't, I mean, there's like a, how many comments is there on? 1.7 thousand comments. I'm not choosing anyone here. Who is it? Read it. It is Amon Ray. The Google search history list, though. Crying face. Hey, Talbot did a good job on that. He, that was, that was a, that was a big project there. 
So um, does he win? No, he had to comment how many times he swam. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, he probably already has the goggles. Okay, do another Then one. right below him, Sue Taylor. Sue Taylor. Swimming four times a week, most weeks, but I'm in my mid-60s and sadly not running. Just biking and swimming. All right. Sue Taylor, congratulations. You are the winner of the contest. Sue Taylor, can you please go to my website? If you wish, you don't have to, but if you wish, go to my website and hit the contact form and just send us a message and we'll send you a message back uh, asking what we need to send these great prizes to you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, Mikal Eden is like maybe... 90% coming to Tucson. I mean, he didn't commit fully. He's still wondering if he wants to spend a couple weeks with us, so if he can handle it. But he is going to be coming for an in-person coaching training camp, and we will update you soon.